Okay, I've been talking about it for weeks, but today I'm going to do some painting. This is a undercoat I bought from B&Q, which is for wood, or actually it's for all surface primer. So today I'm going to focus on the ceiling, I'm going to paint the ceiling. Uh, I'm just going to loosen the lights and let the lights hang, and I'm going to use little food bags I got from the kitchen to cover the lights up. I can seal them in there just so they don't get any paint on. And I'm going to take the surround off for this skylight. I thought about taking the doors off the cupboards to paint them, but I can't be bothered. So, here we go. Does anyone get this problem with masking tape? You just can't peel it off in one go. It just always, always rips. Here we go, right. No, no. so difficult to paint with these lights hanging down. Don't do it like this. I wouldn't do it like this again. I don't know how else to do it though, but it's tricky with these things hanging down. I'm not being too particular about touching the edges because it's all got to be gone over with this undercoat stuff anyway. Oh, before I choose a colour for these the walls. It's gonna all be white, so I'm not, too, I'm not being too fast. I think that's the first coat done. I mean, what a difference! Just looking at it in the in the viewfinder here. When you're looking at it like here, you can see all the roller marks, but I think you can see it on there as well. Let that dry, do another coat. Got to wait four hours. Ugh. So that's the second coat down on the ceiling. It's looking so much better already. I can't wait to paint all the walls and cupboards and things. So I think I'm going to go for white ceiling, magnolia walls and cupboards. But the doors on the wardrobes and on these units, I think I light grey. And I'll match all the coverings for the foam. Maybe a light grey as well. The kitchen work surface is a dark grey. So maybe I could try and get it a bit you know, a darker grey to match this kitchen unit. And I've always planned on having carpet because I like warm carpet, but you know barefoot on carpet is a bit nicer. But now I'm thinking grey kitchen worktop, grey doors Maybe like a grey uh, wood look, do uh, maybe, what do you call it, laminate flooring, dark grey laminate flooring, just to match all the, all the grey that's in here, it'd be quite nice. I could always get a rug, can't I? <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to do one more coat. 
this is the undercoat anyway. This is the undercoat. So I made you one more coat of this. And then I was thinking about doing the whole van in bathroom paint because that's more used to condensation and stuff. And it's going to be steam from the cookers and condensation. So bathroom paint, what do you think? I think, I don't know, does everyone else do that? But that's what I'm going to do, I think. Makes sense. So, in between painting the ceiling, that looks bad right now, need another couple of coats on that. Um, that's just the undercoat, I think. Uh, in between doing that, I'm wiring in this switch panel that I bought from switch panels, switchpanel.co.uk. They're on eBay, they do a variety of combinations. Uh, Check them out. Anyway, this is this is uh this is what I bought from them. So I've got a 240 volts uh, plug there. Uh, I've got a voltage reader. I've got a cigarette lighter. I've got USB port there, and I've got five toggle switches. Uh, so far, I've wired up my lights on that one. There are all my lights on the ceiling, and I've wired up this switch to turn on both the USB port and the voltage reader because I'm not going to want that on while I'm sleeping. A blue light, it's going to be annoying. So I've wired both of them to that. Uh, so yeah, 12.7. I, I think that's about right. Let me know, let me know, I think that's right. All right, now I'll show you the messy wiring around the back. <laughs> Hello. So, I'm setting up this little switchboard I've got. And I'm using this conduit again. This stuff that I swore I would never use. And I've just been getting stressed with it again, pushing, trying to push cable through it, and it getting caught on all these ridges. I've just learned how to use these things. Ready? Rather than doing that, fold it. There you go, and then, that cable goes all the way down to there. Just simply push it. There we go. That's how simple it should be. Okay, so I know it's messy right now, but let me try and explain how all this wiring is working. So you've got the five toggle switches here, you've got the USB port, and you've got the cigarette lighter and the voltage reader. Now all of this, all of these things need to be earthed and they, are, they go off down this conduit. I'll show you where that goes in a minute. But let me just explain for anyone that doesn't know, on these switches you've got three terminals. So you've got the positive, this comes from the fuse box and the battery, goes to the top. The bottom one is the negative, so that's an earth, that brown cable goes off through the conduit and then the middle terminal that goes to your appliance, so in this case it's the lights, my lights on this one you've got the positive that goes to the fuse box, the earth and the middle one goes to both the voltage reader and the USB port okay so now my earths all go through there, it's going to be more but all they all go through this conduit and they all come out down here. This will be tied up to this bus bar. Now this bus bar with this cable here is connected to the negative on the leisure battery. So that goes up there. So then all these are earthing points. I can earth things too. Okay, let me show you how the positive is going. This is the positive on my leisure battery. I have one which goes to the split charge relay. The other one here goes to my fuse box. Now, I have just ordered me another one of these fuses to put here. You need to put a 50 amp fuse with this, you know, before this fuse box. Okay, so then on this fuse box, you've got all the fuses and all the terminals here, which can go to your appliances or your switches for the appliances. So in this case, this, is, this, this goes to the switch for my lights. This goes to the switch for my USB port and my voltage reader. Now, these have all got different voltage readings, so the, the voltage, let me just double check. Again, if you bought this, bought these panels from this company, 
and it comes with a wiring diagram on the back. So the voltage reader has a 3 amp, it needs a 3 amp fuse, and the USB port needs a 5 amp fuse, 5, 6, 7, 8, so that's 8. That's an 8 amps you need, but you need to get, have the fuse at the weakest point. So I've just had a five, got a 5 amp fuse in there. That's doing both of those, the USB port and the voltage reader. That, oops, sorry, bad cameraman. That, so that will do that. Hello, uh, it's delivery time, so I've bought loads of stuff, loads of, I had like 10 things, like 10, more than 10 things, just all being sent to me, a load of cable, I had my switch panel, which is here, um, I had, yeah, loads of like battery cable, loads of terminals, loads of fuses, um, and a load of stuff here, I can't even remember, remember what it all is, but this, is a table leg. So I'm gonna be fixing my table now off the floor. I don't know how this whether the table is gonna be able to just sit on this or whether it's gonna wobble and spin, I don't know. Anyway, um so these are the things for the table leg. So that goes into the floor. So you've got to cut a hole that size for that to sit in and then you can fix it down and your table leg just slots into it. However, I've got ladders under my floor for sliding back and forth out the back so I'm going to have to build myself a little raised floor in this seating area so I can put that in it. Bit annoying but I think it'd be alright. And this is the plate to go on the table, under the underside of the table. For the other side of the table leg to go in. Okay. We'll get rid of that. Show you this has just this one here in front of me. Just literally turned up. I just signed for it a second ago. Two things in here. One, this is my Jabsco 2.9 water pressure pump. It's for my sink. It's to pass the water from my water tank to my sink. Oh, it's really quite heavy. Apparently, it's very highly recommended by the company. <laughs> by the company I bought it from. By, uh, it's the same company I bought my Smev sink and hob thing from and this is what they recommend for it. I know a lot of people use these submersible whale uh, pumps but I want it in an inline pump because my water tank's right in the back so I wanted to just set up a pipe and just have this proper jobby. So I'm looking forward to fitting that. Got a load of filters and different attachments with it. I'll give those instructions a read in a minute. Oh, oh come on. I'll sort that out in a sec. And the other thing in here, from the same place, is a 20 litre water tank. 
which is going to be for my sink wastage. I think I can probably put that put there in place of that, and then you can stick a pipe down there. A little breather, is that? Oh, that, that, what is that? <laughs> what is that? That's weird. But maybe you can just pass. Pass. Don't know what that one is for. But, uh, I did have loads more deliveries, but I think I've just been opening them and using them. Anyway, uh, looking forward to fitting that water pump and have and have a sink that works. Um, anyway, that's it for now. Okay, for those that want it, some more information on this pump. I got it from the same place I got my Smev cooker and hobs from. Cooker, hobs and sink from. Uh, clear cut conversions, they're on eBay, they have their own website. I think this was 70, 70 pounds. Uh, yeah, I think like 75 pounds, including the water bottle. Um, this is 25 psi, 1.7 bar, uh, flow rate 2.9 gallons per minute. Uh, so you can shower with this, you can, it's good enough for your sink, it's good enough for a shower. Um, I might set up like a little shower out and out door shower, I can clip a little shower head on the outside the door or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, I don't know if there's any other information you want. You need a 10 amp fuse, should be good enough, should be good enough for what I want. I'm going to use John Guest fittings rather than hose pipes, you can, you got barbed connectors if you wanted them, but I'm going to use John Guest so it's all long lasting hopefully <laughs> hello welcome to underneath my sink at the minute I'm, I'm messing around with the wiring of the water pump so my water tanks right, right underneath there underneath these sofas is my water tank so I'm gonna bring the water along here and this pump here is going to draw the water to my sink. Now I'm having to go with this wiring and you can tell me if you think I've done it wrong. I had, I'm, I'm following one of these Facebook pages, um, some camper van Facebook page and some guy had to go at me for using these chop blocks. Now are they not, are they not good enough? I'm not sure, I don't, I don't know. Tell me if you don't think there's the way to do it, then tell me. I'll, I'll I'll change this round. But this is what I've done for now, mainly to test it out, to see see if I've got the wiring right. Okay, so this pump comes with a, a positive and a negative cable. Okay, and the tap is the switch. Okay, so my electrics is all down here. Can you see? Can you see? I'm trying to show you. Let me change the camera angle. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that I didn't have a fuse between the battery and the fuse box, but I do now. There it is, it's a 50 amp fuse. Okay, so this water pump, I know it's messy, I'm sorry I keep saying it. This is the cable for the water pump. So this is the positive, which is going to go on here, which has a 10 amp fuse here, as well as underneath the sink there's another fuse. The negative is this one, which goes to my bus bar. Uh, the positive goes all the way around the van. And it comes out here with this blue cable. Okay, so my positive in this comes in for this orange cable, and this blue one is the positive. So that positive connects to one side of the switch. This white cable is the white cable for the tap, which is the switch. So the positive joins the switch there. It goes into the switch and then back down the other white cable, which goes which joins with this black thing which is a fuse. Yeah, so you just need a fuse between the switch and the pump. It's a 10 amp fuse on this pump, which is in there. So, yeah, between the switch is the fuse, which goes to the positive. And the negative of the pump just joins up with the negative on this. This neg That negative goes around the van and it is joined here to my bus bar, which is earthed to the battery, which is earthed to the chassis of the van. 
so that's how I've wired it up. If you don't think these chop blocks are any good, or you know, tell me, and I'll, tr I'll, you know, I'll try and, uh, I'll change it. So that's how I've wired it up for now. Just mainly to test it. Um, and also, I've got a, so I've got a 10 amp fuse in here between the switch and the pump. And but it's also the positive is also connected to this fuse box in here, which also has a 10 amp fuse on it. So it's definitely fused. Um, but if I turn it on, uh, it's noisy because I've got no water going to it right now. So the water will come from my water tank, and then it's going to connect to this side of the pump, which has a filter on it. And then the water will come out of here. Just put stick a hose on there with a jubilee clip. So that will join from here to here. Which will send water into the tap. And then this is my wastage from the drain. It's going to go into my 20 litre water there for my wastage. So I think that's wired up okay. Just the chop block is, is not, I'm not sure on. So yeah, let me know if, if, that's, if there's a better way of doing that. Thank you. Okay, so that was another random video. Just still haven't finished any of those jobs that you just saw. The wiring's still a mess, the painting still needs more coats, the water needs plumbing in. But I'm going away um, for a few days now with my with my missus, so I wanted to get another video on YouTube before we go. Um, as you can see, I've taken the doors off the units and I've painted. Uh, the ceiling's had three coats. This side has had three coats, that side is at the back, and this side I've had two coats of the undercoat. <clears throat> so I'll give that another coat. I haven't done the wardrobe yet. Um, so yeah, I need to get more. I need to get some bathroom paint, I think. I'm going to just go over the ceiling with white magnolia walls. I've told you all this stuff anyway. So yeah. Um, don't have anything else to say, I don't think. But uh, thank you for watching. Um, I'm sorry that the, the videos are just rubbish. But um, I'm, I'm, thank you for watching. Subscribe, comment, help me out. I need help. Thank you, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.